can't use those anymore. I'm going on a trip that I can't expense. I really shouldn't be traveling so much without a source of income, but I'm going on a retreat because I'm seeking something, a specific experience, and I'm going a long way for it. I want to more fully realize my true nature, to find the truth and feel better in my life. But there always seems to be a tension between where I am and where I want to be. Is the best we can do to just make that tension as subtle as possible, to experience it as mere contrast, as Abraham teaches. Speaking of accepting the things we cannot change, I might be late for my flight and not make it to England. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. I know, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> You've been great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I missed my flight, and now I'm here in Amsterdam on a long layover to the UK. At least I get to enjoy this city a little bit. Recently, I was watching a video by the non dual spiritual teacher Rupert Spira where he said eventually we discover that the grass is as green as it's ever going to get. Nothing will make it greener. Is spirituality the only recourse? When searching for happiness and fulfillment in worldly possessions, accomplishments, and relationships, is our current situation as good as it's ever going to get? I might as well bring up Rupert Spira as I have in many of my other videos already because I'm going on one of his week-long retreats in Lincolnshire, England. In the video I mentioned, Rupert talks about relationships, how they can be a natural celebration of spiritual understanding as long as we don't seek them out of a sense of lack and insecurity. But don't we want anything because we currently lack it and we think we'll feel better in the having of it? Aren't all pursuits intended to fill in the gaps, even if we're already at a place of spiritual understanding and a baseline of unconditional happiness? If we are fully satisfied with our innate nature of who we really are at any moment, if we can directly access this sense of completeness and fulfillment right now, then will we really be motivated by any new desires? Does living an unconditional happiness deter us from further pursuits in life? It seems like all action and relation in this world depends on a movement toward something better, from a place of at least some amount of discontent with where we're at. A good example is me missing my flight today. I could have been really upset with paying an extra $700 and losing 12 hours, but I've trained my mind to think more positively in any situation. I can more easily realize in the heat of the moment now that any anger and frustration may be a natural reaction, but it doesn't have to persist. It doesn't really serve me, and I can let go of it. After that, I can pivot to more positive thoughts and even see the silver lining. But I still really didn't like the situation and would have preferred not to go through all that. Even though I was able to recover a baseline level of happiness by realizing at a deeper level I can never really be in danger and nothing is ever really wrong, I still have certain preferences in life. As a human being, I'm biologically designed to feel dissatisfied and even threatened in certain situations in order to survive. But Rupert teaches that we can find a place of peace and contentment regardless of circumstances and conditions. It's a source of causeless joy that's innate to who we really are. All we have to do is realize this essence and then to take whatever actions we're inspired to take. But these actions would come from a feeling of fulfillment and completeness rather than a place of lack and limitation. However, I would contend that everything we're inspired to do, even if we're inspired from a place of already feeling complete and aligned with our true nature, comes from a place of at least some amount of dissatisfaction. Even something as simple as taking a sip of water. If I'm really dehydrated, 
I feel compelled to do it, and resisting my urge to do so would feel very dissatisfying. I would feel incomplete without taking that sip. The alternative action would be displeasing, and that's what makes me act. I would think that most of our efforts are actually for improving our station in life, making our life conditions as favorable as possible. Even if we take a broader perspective to serve others and society at large, we're doing it to make their conditions better, and doing so pleases us and gives us a sense of accomplishment. All action may always be about greater fulfillment, even if we start with a baseline level of contentment and peace. The grass may always be greener, and it's supposed to feel that way. But the trick is to still be as content as possible while pursuing those improvements in life. That's where spiritual understanding and practice can fit in. Spirituality can supplement our otherwise normal worldly pursuit of happiness to fill in the gaps of our search. We can still be ordinarily identified with our separate and limited selves, relating to our thoughts and desires. But at the same time, our experiences can be interspersed with and maybe even permeated by moments of clear spiritual understanding. Sam Harris talks about a state of mind where our happiness is not predicated on the next good thing happening, even while pursuing improvements and goals in life. He uses the metaphor of a search party out at night in a vast area. Shedding some light is an analogy of how much we can puncture the Seeking of Happiness project with the recognition that we're already free and happy. He describes meditation as allowing for this, to train our minds to let in some light for the search party, a thousand times a day if possible. Moments of clarity punctuating moments of struggle throughout our lives. Maybe even getting to a point of enjoying the whole process. Like and comment if this resonated with you and subscribe below to follow me on my journey. See you tomorrow.